Right, welcome back to Ben's Garden Room DIY. What did we get up to last time, Gabby? What did we get up to? <laughs> I don't know why I was at work. We built that. Oh yes, we built the We built that. The Royal Wee, that is. Um, Joyce are in, as you know, if you watched the last episode, Joyce hangers are on. It's taking my weight, so that's the start. So now we are going to get the, Gabby? That'll do. Um, we're just going to cut it slightly longer than the length of uh, concrete that we've got down there, our little concrete pads. Cover them over, we'll slide them under the frame, and that will stop the transition of water into the frame. Stop it from... The concrete block into the wooden frame. Stop it from rotting. Oh, yeah. from rotting. <laughs> Alan Partridge. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's not too bad. Bring this over this, an inch over this way, and then a second piece on the top, an inch over that way. Okay. Then we've covered all our bases. No overlap. Just an inch. Ultimately, the time I built all the um, cladding out and dropped it down the front, these will be hidden. And then once these are all on, we can put our little L brackets there and we can bolt the tin frame to the concrete blocks. And we're finished with that. Let's put you on a uh, Let's put you on fast forward again. Right, damp proof course is on. Now what I've got to do is anchor the frame to the concrete blocks. I've got these really heavy duty out brackets here. I've also got these concrete anchors, anchor fixings. And these are great because what they don't do is shatter the concrete block. Drill the hole in the block, screw those in, and then secure this to the timber frame with some twist nails. So I'm gonna... right, not quite sure what you can see there, but I was just whacking in the owl brackets. I've got those secured with the concrete anchors into the block through the DPC, L-shaped bracket, twist nails into the joists. Every single pier that's on, not going anywhere. Check out that king span. Look at the sun bounce on that. Woo! It's like being on a place in the sun. <laughs> I am going to set to getting the little battens in place so that I can drop in the um, insulation board. So what I've got here, is 100 mil, so 10 centimeter, king span insulation. They've got to be absolutely flush with the top of the timbers. So I need to put little batten brackets all the way around so that when I drop the insulation in, it catches it and it rests level with the top. So I'm gonna set the chop saw up. So a little block there, 12 centimeters in from the blade, which means I can whack that up there. I did that 124 times. <laughs> right, in order to pop the battens in the right place, I'm just scribing a line, the depth of the insulation. Pop that in there, holding it on the line. And that's it. That there, all the way around, is gonna hold the insulation. <laughs> Oh, but I've put all the chicken wire in. It was really blooming boring, so I didn't bother filming it. We, where we've got these blocks that's gonna hold the uh, insulation in place, I've used them to clamp the chicken wire and a few staples for good measure as well. So that goes all the way around. I'm now onto the insulation, which is actually quite fun. I've been online as well, I've been on YouTube, I've been everywhere looking at the easiest way to cut this stuff. There's 101 different ways of cutting it. People have even tried bread knives, but that is definitely not gonna work on here. Do you know what I found? Just cutting it with a standard saw uh, seems to do the trick. Little Irwin number here, not a Johnny Irwin number. <laughs> 
by the way, managed to put the first piece in over there and it's sitting flush. So I'm going to set you up on a time lapse so you can watch. Oh, by the way, I'm not doing the shed section because I'm not made of money. Gabby's fixed the pond. I've got the insulation in. I feel like Frosty the Snowman. It's gone everywhere. It's not nice stuff. Run home on TV, just in case you're wondering. It's gone in quite nicely, actually. There are a couple of areas, particularly in these sort of triangulated sections, where you've got little gaps. A bit of expanding foam in there to retain the insulation integrity. Does that sound good, Gabby? Mini DIY girl here is going to film for us, aren't you? You're going to do the film, so we're going to do a little bit of expanding foam, aren't we? DIY mm -hmm. girl. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. There, you see the foam coming out. Don't know over for that. Oh no! Not no. Too much, yeah, isn't that? Can you see Come that? Close. Can you see that on the camera? Yep. I can see a bit where you put it a bit too much. All right. Don't give the game away. There's more now. Yeah, it expands, I know. No, Mummy, I'm taking it. I know, but you need to point it towards Daddy. Yeah, they need to see, so... <laughs> they need to see. Well, whatever pops up the top you see there, DIY girl, we cut off after. Whoopsies! Don't want that on it. Oh, my God! Yeah. <laughs> you hear it? Mummy, can you? The Apollo 19 of garden rooms now. Going where? Oh, no garden room has ever been before. Quite literally, because I don't think there's ever been a garden room here before. Now I can uh, get the subfloor on, and I'm just trying to decide whether I'm going to glue it, screw it, nail it, or glue it and screw it, or glue and nail it. Decisions, decisions. Good morning, good morning. Oriented strand board tongue and groove to make life easier. Tools of the trade today are going to be pink grip, some five minute wood glue, a two and a half inch wood screws. I've got 10 sheets to cover this entire floor. So I'm hoping that's gonna be enough. If anything, I might be one short. Let me just talk you through what I did there. On the joints of the OSB, I filled that with five minute foam, which expands. There you go, can you see it coming out there? So that really nicely fills all the gaps. I used pink grip against the joist in the OSB to stick it down. And then I've used my nails, oh, my screws, I should say. To fix that. Check it out, how satisfying is that? We actually have some kind of a structure going on now, which is brilliant. Um, so that is our subfloor completed. See that little Sharpie line there? That's my dividing wall. So I'm getting a feel now for the size of the room, which is nice because it's, it's a little bit hard to sort of gauge the size of it when it's just some open framework. But now we've got the subfloor down I can get a feeling for this angle here. It's gonna have my desk running in front of it. We're gonna have this big picture window just here. The door is gonna be facing into the garden there. We're gonna have a wall at the back. Along the width of this wall is gonna be sort of a nice floating seat, which I'm gonna try and have a stab at making a cushion for. Well, there you go with my new sewing machine. <laughs> Above that, I'm going to have a recessed shelf that sort of juts into the, the shed area. So that projects into the shed area, stealing a bit of space from there. 
but I can obviously put all my lovely design books and files and all that kind of stuff up there, which is nice. And then we'll go out the door here. We'll walk around here. And this, all this back section is gonna be polypropylene. Um, and, this, and it's gonna have uh, a door opening outwards. So there's not to take up any room in the, in the shed. And then we'll walk in here. And this is where my lawnmower will be. So I'm pretty pleased. There we go, subfloor down. We're ready now to build some walls in the next video. But please, of course, as always, remember to hit subscribe to follow my DIY adventures in the garden as I build this garden room. It looks like, which is great, I'm gonna be going back to work soon. So this might be a slower process than I first, at first anticipated, uh, but I'll keep the videos coming as and when I can. I'm gonna start making some walls and I'll tell you about that in the next one.